Hello everyone, you welcome back to class. I am Akirili Oladimiji Philip. On this edition, we move on to the advantages and disadvantages of sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction still on the series of a reproduction underneath that section called inheritance, variation and evolution. All right. So basically, we we'll look at the first term um, advantages, or the, we'll just look at the advantages of sexual reproduction. All right, number one is it produces um, variation in offspring. Variation simply means differences. So how does it produce variation in offspring? Because we have two different gametes coming together. For example, in the case of humans, the egg from the mother fuses or the let me say the sperm from the father fuses with the egg from the mother which makes it um, a bit different so you have different characteristics so like myself i'm from from two people apparently so i have the mixture of my dad's um character or traits as well as that of my mom so that means we have so that means i'm going to be different from both of them and i'm also going to be different from my other siblings all right another advantage is that the species can adapt to new environments due to variation which gives them a survival advantage the truth of the matter is this organisms produced by sexual reproduction most times are better than the preceding generation what that means is i'm expected to be better than my parents in structure because two of them came together to form me so which means their strength put together in one person so organisms formed by um social reproduction are meant to be better than their um, parents basically because the strength of the two parents of the two gametes is combined in one organism as it were another thing is a disease is less likely to affect all the individuals in the population majorly because all of them cannot have the same weakness that's the truth because organism produced by sexual reproduction will have different variation some might be weak some might be strong so definitely the same thing cannot kill all of them because they have different weaknesses and different strength as it were now humans can speed up natural selection through selective breeding which can increase food production so one advantage of this is that we can actually control it yes humans can influence we now have new breeds of organisms you can take the semen of a desired um breed of animal and cross it with that of another species that's like an you're going to create a hybrid so it can be um influenced because you know what you want all right then well we'll look at the disadvantages at the other time now it says here time and energy are needed to find a mate that's actually true um for example if you said to be a sexual reproduction that involves one organisms so it just demands that this organism just decide to split into two and you are good to go but for the sake of asexual sexual reproduction this needs to look for another mate to fuse to basically so it takes um time and energy for you to find a mate in most cases of course i i did say that there are some organisms that they themselves have both the male and the female um, gametes in one organism. This might not apply. This first point might not apply. But for other organisms, for most of them, it demands that they look for a mate. And it says that it is not possible for an isolated individual. Yes. Imagine if a male organism is isolated that means it cannot reproduce if a female organism is also isolated it cannot reproduce except it can carry out parthenogenesis which means self reproduction so to say i think um komodo dragon i think if they are isolated they can actually the female can actually reproduce i think i'm not so sure but i think either the female can just reproduce self-reproduce or the male if it's actually for a period of time can also reproduce i'm not so sure but i think there's some they carry out pathogenesis which means self-reproduction so generally if the organism is left alone they can't reproduce by themselves all right now let's move on to 
asexual reproduction what are the advantages to that now the population can increase rapidly when the conditions are favorable yes like we saw the case of the bacteria i showed us that was dividing sometimes ago i think that should be in the other lecture talking about sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction i did mention there that you can see how they were reproducing so rapidly so when conditions are favorable you can have thousands of organisms within a short time it says here only one parent is needed so you don't have to look for the other parent to bring about asexual reproduction then it is more time and energy efficient as you don't need a mate like i told you just by yourself you've got gotten to a point of reproduction the organism just divides and go ahead to reproduce all right now it is faster than asexual reproduction yes it takes lesser period of time lesser time to bring about um asexual reproduction then the disadvantages it does not lead to variation in the population now i want to remember this that if this organism reproduced by sexual asexual reproduction are split into two like that that means all the weaknesses in this organism will be will be exact weakness of the same organism so whatever kills this parent can equally kill the daughters so to say so the species may only be suited to one habitat yes because if this parent was only living in a salty water that means the offspring can only live in salty water because they are not better but you know in sexual reproduction imagine you have a species that lives in a salty water that mates with a species that lives in non-salty water like fresh water when you combine the two together that means the offspring can live in both in a way so that is like creating variation but in sexual reproduction the same thing lifestyle of the parent is what the offspring will also have to stay with because they can't survive outside that all right now you say disease may affect all the individuals of a population yes because none of them is uh, better adapted than the other they have the same weakness and the same strength as it were all right now it is important for us to um, know that some organism can actually carry out both sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction now and this depends on whether the condition is favorable or not let me say this most organisms that carry out both of this reproduction i said most not all of them will prefer to use sexual reproduction but when the environment is not so favorable they switch on to asexual reproduction so let us see some of those examples are um malaria parasite which is plasmodium now plasmodium is not about whether the condition is favorable or not the two life cycle it has in the human body is going to reproduce asexually in the um, mosquito's body which is the vector is going to reproduce asexually i think that again in the human body is going to reproduce asexually in the mosquito's body which is the vector is going to reproduce sexually there then we look at fungi fungi most times reproduce by sexual reproduction but when the condition is not favorable they switch on to asexual reproduction as well as on plants so let me give us clear examples here so the first one like i told you is the malaria parasite which is caused by which is carried by mosquitoes so the parasites are transferred to human when the mosquito feeds on human blood so these malaria parasites pr produce asexually in the human host if you have seen my lecture on um, protist disease you probably understand this more then it reproduces sexually in the body of the mosquito so this is the life cycle of the malaria parasite as it were so this is happening in the human body and it's reproducing asexually so you can see how it is just reproducing there that's those are merozoites while in the feet in the mosquito's body two gametes are fused together there so two of the gametes you can see these are gametocytes that will produce two of the different gametes and two of the gametes will then fuse in the body of the mosquito then the life cycle continues like that so don't forget the 
plasmodium reproduce sexually in the body of the mosquito and reproduces asexually in the body of humans as it were then we look at fungi now many fungi reproduce both sexually and asexually like i told you now these species of this species of fungi release spores which develop into new fungi basically so when they most of them what they use to reproduce is by using spore basically now but this spore can be produced either sexually or asexually so you see here can be produced via sexual or asexual reproduction all right now spores that are produced via via sexual reproduction definitely will show variation because two strains or two threads we call it ife of um of um uh, fungi we have to come together to bring about to unite that's going to be variation because two strains basically now so this is what i was talking about so now this is a type of fungi called rhizopores you can see it is reproducing here by asexual reproduction nothing came together it's just the same one that developed to form spores this is it here then when it is ripe it ruptures it bursts. that this structure is called sporangium it ruptures and releases the spore and the spores touches the substrate which are it could be decaying food decaying tree or anything and when it lands on that suitable substrate it grows again now this other one is talking about um sexual reproduction now you can see these are two rhizopores growing on bread so a part of them you can see two strains come together here and fuse that's it says some sort of sexual reproduction so they mix their nuclei their nuclei fuses together to produce the zygote of which that will also lead to the production of sorry that will also lead to the production of um spores all right so this must be clear both whether sexual or asexual will result in formation of spores but in the case of sexual reproduction it has to mean two strains coming together just as you have it here to um, form a zygote and that zygote will then form will grow to form a new fungi that will then form spores basically all right now this is an example of uh, this is a fungi i'm just showing you a clip that is showing you spores produced from fungi so these are spores this is puffball it's a type of fungi the rain that just fell on it just released the spore that way all right that just to show you what the spores looks like in reality now lastly the other type of organism that reproduce both sexually and asexually are flowering plants basically i made mention of i i i, I use the word flowering plant let me say higher plants because we have some other plants it's not all plant that does that place we have plants that are that are um, filamentous like spirogia that doesn't do all of that so that's why i just use the word flowering plants they reproduce sexually by the use of their flowers and on the other hand they can reproduce essentially by the use of some parts of such plants let's look at what we're trying to say there now we have some plants such as strawberry plants which produces something called runner let me show you what i mean by that yes now this is the plant now it uses the seed or the fruit that contains the seed to reproduce sexually which means you just plant the seed this was formed from a flower that's sexual reproduction but also it can actually grow stems like this underground stems like this to form what we call runners so from that stem another strawberry can actually grow from there so you can see that it there at the end of which new identical of spring can also form now some other plant also which we that's a um, daffodils which reproduce via bulbs like just like onion so to say new bulbs are formed from the main bulb underground and then grow into new identical offspring plant so this will what okay this is still about um um these two are referring to um strawberry i think i have the other one for uh yes this is why i meant for um daffodils this is you can see this is um 
I'm trying to get that. Yes, this is a new. So while this main plant, main bulb is growing, a new one is growing beneath it like that. So you can see this is this one will also develop to new. So everyone you every time you harvest the main one, this one will also it will have formed another one to succeed it basically. So this is an example of asexual reproduction in plants. All right. So that will be all for now. So I'm going to stop the class right about now we're going to meet in meiosis basically hope that has been helpful and um, bear in mind that i'm going to have videos i'm going to have series of questions solved together at once when i'm done with reproduction aspect of this um uh, section of the segment all right do see you in the next class